Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Red Dead Online and we're doing another fan requested outfit guide. And today we're doing Chris Mannix, the sheriff from the Quentin Tarantino film The Hateful Eight. So uh, if you're interested in that movie and you like this video or whatever, uh, I've actually already done two other outfits from this movie and those include uh, Samuel L. Jackson's character, Major Marky Warren, and also Kurt Russell's character of uh, John Ruth or the Hangman. So I've already done both of those outfits on the channel and uh, I'll have a link in the description with a playlist showing all my outfit guides, and you can find those two in there if you're a fan of this movie. But for today, we're doing Chris Maddox, as has been requested by a lot of people in the comment section. So like always, we're going to do weapons, and then I'll show you the outfit. Uh, but if you find yourself enjoying this video at any point along the line, definitely leave a like on the video to show me that it's a great video, and of course, help it out in the algorithm. And also, if you haven't already and you enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. That way, you'll be helping me out, uh, help, help the channel grow, and also, you'll be seeing uh, lots of more uploads like this. So if you like this content, you're probably going to like that stuff. So it's it's a good win-win deal all the way around. But with all that in mind, let's just dive on in and start off with the weapons. All right, so for Chris Mannix, uh, there's really only one firearm that's closely associated with him, despite not being the only one that he touches throughout the movie. His gun is a standard uh, quick-draw variant of the Colt Single Action Army Revolver in real life. So here in the game, we're going to be using a Cattleman Revolver with the short barrel. I believe his has the darker wood grips. It's hard to find a picture of his gun where he's not holding it, so it's hard to see. But I'm pretty sure from the little snippets I could see that he has darker wood grips so we're gonna use the iron wood grips and I used the mahogany varnish here but really any dark wood would be fine and then no carvings no engravings like I said we're gonna need the short barrel and then there's two ways to go to try to match it now his is pretty dark in the movie it's obviously a modern replica not anything remotely accurate but it looks very 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 uniform in most shots it looks pretty black so that's why I went with the black and steel here but in some other shots you can see the blue sticking out more so you could either do all black steel like this or or all blued steel like this. Either way looks fine. Obviously the blue looks really vivid, but that's because it's like broad daylight here in the gun shop. It looks a little bit more subdued out on the gun when you're out in the streets. But either way, it's going to look decently well because it's going to match the darker look of his gun from the movie. I think the black and steel looks better, but the blued steel looks okay. But like I said, the important thing is the short barrel. And he only carries this one, so it's only going to be one of these, not a dual set. So that is Chris Mannix's gun. All right, and so here we have my best attempt at my uh, Chris Mannix outfit. And now for hair and facial hair, he's clean shaven in the movie, but his face does have a little bit more darkness to it. Uh, sweaty, kind of looks maybe a little bit dirty. So I did include the stubble. I think it helps make my character look a little bit more like him. And then a short to medium length haircut and with either real dark brown or black hair, it's hard to tell what he's got in the movie, but uh, just darker hair in general. And then uh, that kind of does it for his hair and facial hair. But let's go through the uh, uh, items that make up this outfit. So I started it off with the clean black variant of the stalker hat. I think it matches the way that he wears the hat in the movie really well, even though it doesn't look exactly like the hat he has on in the movie. There's a better variant for a hat, uh, or I should say there's a better option to wear as a hat if you want to match the exact hat that he's wearing in the movie better. And that hat is the Robero hat. It just matches his hat from the movie better because it's it's flat, it's got a nice thin brim, it's uh, got that uniform black color to it, it doesn't have any crimping up on the crown of the hat. It matches his hat much better. It's just that the Robert hat sits, basically it looks like it's resting on the top of his head instead of being pulled down to the eye line like most cowboy hats were actually worn. So it depends if how much that matters to you. If the if the style of the hat, the way that the hat looks matters more to you, then the Robero hat is a better option. But if the way he wears the hat is more important, then the clean black variant of the stalker hat is a better option. But that's the hat. Then I chose to add a patterned bandana because in certain shots from the movie, it looks like he's wearing a bandana. It's hard to say because the shots usually go by so quick and it's hard to find a still image that's clear of his neck. Uh, but later on in the movie, he appears to be wearing a bandana or maybe a neckerchief or something, and it looks kind of like this. So that's why I used this variant of the pattern bandana I could see not using it all or using a neckerchief instead um but this is the bandana that I chose to go with then for the coat I went with the black partial coat and now this one was what took me the longest on this outfit because it was really hard to tell what the heck he's wearing earlier in the movie he's wearing a gray overcoat so it's more of a thick woolen looking gray duster jacket over the top of his black coat that he's wearing uh so if you want to do that that's another option and I could show you that uh at the end of the video I'll show you what it looks like if we use the coat that looks the most like his outer jacket but his inner jacket is appears to be a longer black jacket and it's hard to tell in 
certain shots it looks like it's made out of leather or just something shiny, and in other shots it looks more like linen, so it's hard to tell what material it's made out of, but I think this black Marshall coat matches the style and uh, feel of the coat the best. So that's why I went with this for the coat. I did decide to go with a vest, and because I'm pretty sure he's wearing one under his coat, either that or he's got his coat buttoned some of the time, but I think this black opulent vest looks the best. It's got the same style that I was able to find in one photograph, and it, it looks darker black, it's uniform, it's, it's, it looks right. So that's why I chose to go with this. If not, the plain black variant to the paisley vest works, but I think this works better. For the shirt, I went with the clean white everyday over shirt buttoned up because it matches the color style and the color of his very, very well from the movie. Uh, you could use the white uh, everyday shirt or maybe even a white French dress shirt if you don't have this one, but I think this one matches his the best. Then for gloves, any black leather gloves will do, but I think the obvious, the black leather gloves, you know, the namesake, is the best option. He's wearing a dark black, pretty uniform looking, not quite skin tight, but you know, pretty tight, so not super loose black gloves in the movie. So that's why I went with these. For the gun belt, I kept it simple and went with the agency gun belt. I almost went with the embossed gunslinger gun belt, you know, the black variant for that, because I was having difficulty deciding between the two, but he wears a clean black gun belt and it looks a lot like this. So that's why I went with the agency gun belt. It's just the stock one that you start off the game with. For the pants, the dark gray variant of the studded pants is the one I went with. He's wearing gray pants in the movie. I almost went with the clerk pants, but they just looked weird with the outfit. So I think these studded pants look better because his appear to have some, some light either texturing or striping on them in the movie, or I should say in the movie. So that's why I went with these pants. Then for the boots, the clean black variant of the Warren Roper's boots uh, on the outside of his pants match is the best. They look basically identical to the ones he wears in the movie because he's just wearing plain black clean cowboy boots in the movie. So that's the footwear. And so there we have the entire outfit. So like I said, there's one other option. You could do his real early movie variant of it, which doesn't look perfect because he's wearing multiple layers in the movie, but if we want to try getting that, we do have a gray duster that works decently well. You could either use this gray variant of the Walden coat, which works pretty dang well, or this gray variant of the Dunaway coat, which I think matches better than the Walden coat, but both of them work passably well. If you don't like the black leather look uh, for his undercoat, then wearing his overcoat on the outside, the gray one, uh, either one of those options works passably well for it. But like I said, I think it looks a lot like him. Obviously, it depends on which point in the movie you're going for but I think this one works really well. Like I said, the robe arrow hat or the stalker hat are good options, and then the neckwear is up to interpretation because it's kind of hard to tell what he's wearing, but the rest of it looks pretty much exactly like he does in the movie. So that's where we're going to end it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, it turned out looking a lot like a black tryhard outfit, so we have a real-life movie example of a black tryhard here that we've been able to imitate, and I think it turned out pretty good, and the outfit looks pretty solid, especially if you don't mind, you know, being mistaken for a tryhard. Uh, if you like this video, please leave a like on it. It shows me that, you know, I'm making the right type of content that people actually enjoy, and it also helps out the channel and the video immensely in the algorithm, because it's almost entirely determined by interactions, especially for channels that are much smaller, like mine. So, if you can, that would be very helpful, and I'd appreciate it a ton if you could leave a like on the video. If you like the content and haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd also appreciate it if you went and clicked that subscribe button. That way you'll be staying up to date on all the content I release, and if you like this, there's a good chance you'll like all of that stuff because it's all pretty consistent. Uh, and of course, lastly, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, recommendations, or suggestions, or requests for maybe future videos, definitely go down to the comment section and leave all of that there. Obviously, this here is a fan-requested video, so I obviously do them if they're, you know, achievable in the game and they look good. So definitely leave it down there. I can't guarantee that I'll make it, but I can guarantee I'll take a look at it. Uh, but with all that in mind, thanks a ton for watching, especially if you've made it all the way to the end of the video. I definitely appreciate that a lot more than most people would realize. Uh, but with all that in mind, I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time. So have a nice day. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.